Alrighty. So, you sit down. Sit down. Just say, good boy. Got the puppy dog here with us. So we did an early, early morning mission sort of trip, I suppose, to Cape Jervis this morning. Managed a few nice fish. I was going out targeting some bigger southern calamari, but um, yeah, didn't didn't come across that way. But um, I was going to do a film, a bit of a, a comparison video between Weedy Whiting and Tommy's as a teaser, but that didn't really work. So. Managed some great snook though, so I'll show you the fruits of the labour that we put in. I think the biggest one went 63, which is my land based personal best. And the squid, we managed three squid, so stay tuned and check out the awesome footage coming up. So today, I'm doing a little bit of a different sort of style of video. Doing a bit of a test. So in these two packets, I've got the nut on there, got weedy whiting. This one here, I've got teasers. So we're going to compare the two on a teaser and we'll see which one goes better. Predictions, put them in the comments. See how we go. My personal prediction. The Tommies are the old faithful but do love using weedy whiting. So my personal prediction, I think the weedy whiting will catch a couple more squid but you know you can never disregard the Tommy rough. So without further ado let's get these on. So my teaser rigs, now I'm going to use a teaser today because it's my, one of my favourite forms of squidding. It's one of the easiest and I guess the uh, the most successful way, the most productive way that you can go squidding, and it's very easy to use, very easy to set up. It's basically just a float, with a, um, a split shot just to stop the float, a bit of trace, and then just a swivel, like a straight swivel. Hope you can see that, and that just basically goes through the head of the fish, and that just floats there with no hook. The squid grab onto it and it's absolute dynamite so i reckon on the veritas we'll put on a weedy whiting and get that out there straight away so i'll show you guys how to rig this up this is somehow going on to here so we've got our beautiful weedy whiting with our swivel going to push it through the nose of the fish and out the bottom part of the fish there so you see it hanging and then we're going to just clip that back on and that there is our teaser. So let's cast this out now. The wind's going a bit of an interesting direction at the moment so we'll just cast it out We'll see how we go, see how fast this drifts. So normally, I like casting it out and um, letting it drift over some nice bottom is usually a very, very productive way. It's actually gonna move quite quickly. It's actually a very productive way of fishing. It's just letting your floats or your teasers or your, you know, whatever rigs you've got going on, letting it drift along some nice bottom. And that should just, you know, entice the squid a bit more than, you know, just a stationary float. We have one, we've got a snook. How good is that? Oh, we've, it's come out. Awesome. How good's that? I'll walk around and we'll get a look at that, at this little fella here. So to that, slimy little critters. They have to be 45. Get 
dragging that out. Bonked that lure though. They hit very hard. I think it's undersized. But we'll give him a measure nonetheless. What have we got here? No, he's legal. It's a legal size. It's 45 for these fellas. And he is, as you can see, 47. Stoked with that. Now these guys are a fish that you do have to bleed, so I'll turn the camera off for that. But yes, stoked. First of all though, check out the chompers on him. Very, very toothy critters. Let's get him done. Very nice eating fresh too, so this will be dinner tonight. So for that snook there, I was just casting out and doing a very little tweak, tweak, tweak pause. Letting it sit. Now that's a key for snook on hard bodies, soft plastics, is making sure you get a nice little pause in there. Because they love hitting it on the paws. If you don't, you'll find that you get a fair few follows without getting a lot of fish like that. Oh, man. He bonked that. That's a very, very nice snook. Oh, look at that. Frothing. <laughs> Just like that. Could not time it any better. Now that's a much bigger fish. I'll come back around to show you guys. Unreal. Look at that fella. He's a nice, very, very nice snoop. Look at him. Unbelievable. Just as I was, as I was saying, the hookup on live camera, and he's tangling me around everything. Absolutely unreal. How good is that? They're on. How fucking good. Yes. Now for these toothy boys. I'm gonna get my pliers out just to be safe. Probably making a mess of absolutely everything. Mate, just relax. Just chill out. Alright, come in. Yes, yes, I get it. So Pliers is very important when you're fishing, obviously, for very obvious reasons, so you don't get tooth, or a teeth, or a tooth, that's probably the better English, a tooth in, in your finger, or even worse, a hook in your finger. Frothing, that's two and two cast, man, that's awesome. There he is, I'll get a proper look at his chompers again. Look at that, unreal, absolutely unreal. I'll take this time now just to say it is so important to look after your catch properly. You notice the different in, difference in taste, all that sort of stuff, just because you look after your catch. Now I've bled these fish, snap their necks, put them out of their misery, and have them very, very chilled on ice. So, oh, as you can see, the nerves in the fish are still firing but they are dead they are completely dead just really really important to look after your fish make sure you dispatch with them quickly as well i think that's just really really important now let me get this blood cleaned off and let's get back out there we're on again this is a nice fish again oh man get over yahoo that's another nice fish, man. Oh, they're all eating it so close. That was probably about, I reckon, 15 minutes after the last one. Had about five or six follows. We've got another beautiful, let's see if I can get a bit better light. There we go. Beautiful snook. Unreal, I'm frothing, man. That's so cool. So cool get the uh, the hooks out of them again I reckon this will be the last one that I keep oh that was close to getting 
the hook into my finger. Awesome. Awesome stuff. That's another nice one. That's probably the biggest in the morning, I think, or close to. Get a measurement on this fella, if he behaves himself. 60 centimetres. As you can see, he's not behaving himself. Just chill out. Chill out, man. Look, I just want to get a shot of you. Just relax. So, get that tail straightened out. It's at 61 on that little toothy critter. Look at him. Oh, <laughs> on how cool is this? Look what he's just coughed up. I'll try and get him out of his mouth. Look what he's just coughed up. That's what he's been out there eating. And they look like a little blue bait. But he has got his mouth full. What a greedy little guts he's got. Absolutely demolished a couple of them. That's quite a nice size thing in there too. Oh, no way. He's actually got a Tommy down his gullet, which has gone somewhere. It's not in there anymore. Let's pick it out. Try and see if I can find it. There it is. Look at that. Now that is a baby Tommy he's had down his gullet. We'll get a better look at him, but I'll just put him out of his misery. So what you do, you put your finger underneath their little sort of chin, you snap that, that is the artery, they should start dripping a little bit of blood. Which if you're squeamish, then I'll look away. He's in the esky. I'll clean up my hands and then we'll have a look at what he's just coughed up because I love this sort of stuff. I'm not sure if any of you guys love it, but I just love seeing what they're eating. So, look at that little fella. So that's number one. Number two are the things that he had in his gullet. And then we come over to number three, Mr. Unfortunately eaten a Tommy Ruff. So it looks like two Tommy Ruff and like a white bait or a blue bait. I mean one Tommy Ruff and two blue bait. That is unbelievable. So that's what he's been munching on. Now this really is a telltale sort of thing about not being afraid to use a big lure. So my lure, here it is. It's sort of I'd say more close to the size of the blue bait, but I could throw something as big as this Tommy. And if I make it look appealing enough, it'll absolutely demolish it. But how cool is that? I'm real. So I reckon we'll get the catch and release on these fellas. Swam away magnificently, those two. <laughs> Got another one. It's another good fish too, man. It's gone nuts. Now my GoPro just died, but we just got this beautiful fish. This will be the last one that I keep. Look at him. How good is he? Let's check the size on him. He's size, but... Ones. That's the biggest one in the morning. Awesome stuff. And there's another one. It's another big fish, man. Oh. Another one. The squid are just getting absolutely hounded by these things. Squid, but I can hook plenty of these fellas, and these guys always just spat them around. It's just as much fun. Look at those chompers in. This fella 
looks pretty fresh, so I think we're just gonna release him, let him go. Off he goes. Got this little fella. Nice little one. That's number two. I didn't record the first one, but Yeah, it was a lot bigger than the first one too. Of course, as soon as the GoPro goes away, you get fish, but it's alright. There's one. He hasn't quite got a hold of it yet. you guys heaps for watching it's really appreciated to see all the all the love and support that the channel and Instagram and all that sort of stuff's been getting of late it's been absolutely unreal so thank you leave a like comment whatever I reckon comment your personal best land based snook love to sort of go through them cheers for watching Yo. Thank <laughs> you.